Hey guys, I'm Ken Tu and welcome to the, today's video. Uh, today I have something that's unique but not yet so unique. <laughs> As you can tell by the title, I'm going to be making sea glass today. And uh, yeah, that's not in, a, in of itself new, but I thought I would try a couple variations. What got me to try to make sea glass is I have had this idea to cut uh, wine bottles. We get a few that are laying around and I'm just like, well, I got a chalet coming up this summer and I, it's a perfect spot. It's a storefront. It's not like a uh, pop-up craft show where I'm going to be hauling things in and out. If it, you know, if it doesn't sell, I'm going to be hauling it back out hoping it doesn't break as it's being transported. So I'm going to have the chalet and I can just like set something up and let it sit for months and months to see if it sells. So I thought I would try to cut some glass, some wine bottles up and make something that's decorative and at least people will appreciate and draw them in even if it doesn't sell. So um, as I made the cutouts, I was wondering what to do with the glass and I haven't gotten to that yet. I'm sure when I do, you'll see the video of it. <laughs> but uh, I was wondering what to do with the glass because I burned my garbage. I don't... Uh, so any glass that I do get, I have to throw in the recycle bin and it's a little, little more inconvenient. And um, so the scrap glass, I was wondering if I could turn it into sea glass. Of course, I looked it up on the internet, like everything. And of course, you can tumble glass into sea glass. So that's cool. And I thought that's great. But at the same time, I got glass going through my house that I can't throw away so easily, um, including a couple of wine bottles that I was carrying and uh, dropped and uh, broke. <laughs> so to kind of make this <laughs> so to kind of make this video unique, uh, I thought I'd try a couple different things that I haven't seen yet. Um, number one, I did drop the bottles, like I said, a couple of bottles, and they broke, and they still have the label on them. So I thought, well, let's see if I can uh, tumble them with that label or break the glass to, you know, sea glass sized chunks and leave the label on and see if the tumbling action will grind that label off for me. Um, so I don't have to try to work or try to scrape the label off glass that, you know, is already broken and sharp edges. I don't want to deal with that as a, eh, obviously a hazard. Uh, the other problem, the other part is, um, I burn my garbage and sometimes the kids slip something into the garbage that isn't supposed to go in there. Um, glass being one of them, um, batteries occasionally, things that explode, because you know, I guess they want to keep me on my toes when I'm burning the garbage. But, um, yeah, so the glass is, sometimes comes out looking like this and it's got the nasty, it's got plastic melted to it, the, maybe the label is still burned on there, and it looks just like nasty. And uh, so I thought I would just try to bust it up and throw it in the uh, tumbler to see if, you know, that'll come out clean and the black gunk that doesn't, it's unattractive, just ends up going down the, uh, well, into the scrap bucket, <laughs> this is what I use. And then, of course, I got the everyday household trash. Um, my wife drank a kombucha, and I'm like, well, that's some pretty cool brown glass. Let's see if I can turn it into sea glass. And, of course, this is a pasta jar from last night's dinner, actually. And, like I said, otherwise i got to take it to recycle. i got to haul it out of the house, but maybe instead I can bust it up and turn it into some clear sea glass. Uh, my son loves working with resin, so sea glass works well with resin or... Uh, I think we saw a few other ideas to do with sea glass, so maybe like a wind chime, sun catcher type deal, so yeah, we'll keep it around, and if we feel like working with it, we'll work with it, otherwise uh, we'll see if it just sells raw at the chalet, but uh, so here we go, I'm going to try to bust it up, and yeah, feed it into the tumbler. Alright, so I've already started to break up the pasta jar a little bit, um, decided to move into the garage, I'm just working right on the floor. Uh, that has splashed a little bit with uh, little tiny fragments of glass. Uh, see if I can get one on my glove here and show you what I mean. You are, if you've broken glass before, you know that you get little tiny shards everywhere. And that's just been the case uh, here. So I moved into the garage where, uh, or you know, to the floor of the garage where it won't spread as much because I'm not high. And uh, it doesn't matter if it hits the floor because I'm just going to sweep it up and throw it in the tumbler <laughs> or I'll just throw it out in the driveway um, doesn't matter either way so uh, I'm just gonna finish breaking this one thing I am interested to see uh, is is if this little channel that uh, you know the screw cap for the uh, jar if that's gonna smooth out or not so in a couple of days of tumbling in the tumbler so 
I'm just going to finish breaking this up and uh, move on to the next one. It's looking like I'm getting some good sized pieces here. Uh, one video I did watch, uh, the user had said that um, he had a surface that was a little too curved and the tumbler couldn't get inside that curve. So I'm just making sure I don't get anything that's too curvy. I'm just throwing the little pieces in, even like the little granules of glass in, just to, uh, I know they're going to grind up and they're going to disappear to nothing, but uh, one pasta jar and a uh, uh, tumbler barrel is about a quarter, third full. And that's without the bottom, so let's bust up the bottom because it looks like it's thicker glass and be more fun to tumble up. I did not really expect to get that much glass out of one jar, uh, so I'm just going to... Um, I'm gonna start with that kombucha bottle and see how much I can get out of that. Nice brown glass, probably similar in size to a uh, beer bottle. So, here we go. That was fun. Great stress reliever, too. <laughs> well, I didn't get to swing at it like I really want if I was trying to relieve stress. But. Okay. So there we are. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to call that a tumbler barrel full. Two bottles, uh, standard, I don't know, what we, about the equivalent of a, I don't know, beer bottle. You know, just any bottle you buy out of a store. And then the pasta jar, and that's uh, definitely at least three quarter full on the tumbler barrel. So, uh, that's it on that. Uh, good thing I grabbed another container to continue to dump the glass in. And uh, I guess you're going to get a couple of little shots out of this of how this stuff turns out. So... Time to get into that dirty glass and bust that up and set it aside and get it ready for the uh, next tumble. All right, here's that dirty, um, I think this was a sauce or something that was in this jar probably by the looks of it. But here's the one that came out of the fire barrel, just with all the plastic still on it, melted to it, all the gungy stuff. Kind of what you'd pick up if you were to do a, kind of like run alongside the road and pick stuff off and this pick stuff up in the spring before the grass gets tall. This is kind of what it would look like too. Wow. I thought being in a fire already would be incredibly fragile, but I guess not. There we go. Here's the first what's left of a wine bottle. <laughs> It's almost better with a light label on. I don't get as many pieces flying all over the place. At least for breaking. We'll see about for tumbling. Oh, here's one of those wine bottles with a little uh, dimple on the bottom. I was wondering what would happen when I ran across one of those, how it would break. Heck, not that way. There we go. Put that in the little Tupperware. Okay. I'm going to take this out in the yard where nobody's going to walk. I'm going to shake that out. Sweep up the pieces in here. Oh, here's a good one. I got away. And, uh, yeah. Okay, here we are at the sink. One scoop, one tablespoon of 6090 carb silicon carbide grit. And I filled the barrel. I, you know, I swept the garage floor and just threw whatever was in the garage floor sweepings, dirt, a little bit of sawdust in there too. I just threw it all in there. So you got little glass pieces, everything else. And I'll just fill it with the water. Good enough. Get the lid on and here we go. Alright, it hasn't been quite three days, not a full 72 hours, but time to see what came out of this. See how the glass is coming along. It's 
poke in there. Get it dried off or get it rinsed off and see what's going on. So far, so good. Uh, no sharp edges anymore. Um, it's not rounded on the sides, which is you know, a little disappointing here. But uh, nothing says I can't pop it back in for a little bit or add a little more grit and get a little more aggressive. But let's dry this off and see what it looks like. Yeah. Definitely has a frosted look to it. Uh, yep, see a little bit of cracking there. Uh, it's a fresh break too, so that's relatively new. So it's still breaking inside the barrel. But uh, definitely frosted glass. I think I might add just another uh, scoop of grit and just let it sit there for a day. And check it again tomorrow. Alright, so here we go with the... Uh, dirty glass or more of the dirty glass so the stuff that has the labels on it I can't get the label off I'm gonna just throw that in there let's try this batch here let's grab a bunch of stuff here I think the other barrel I'm having a little trouble getting it clean I think what I did is I overfilled it so I'm gonna try not to fill it too much this time because I took the glass out and I could feel the grit on it yet but I couldn't uh, the edges were still nice and sharp or 90 degrees. They weren't rounded off like you'd expect in sea glass. And so I'm not going to try to fill this one as full. Uh, let's see. Let's get some of that dirty glass. That was the first one I broke. It's probably at the bottom of this thing. Now that I'm in the house, i got to be careful. I can't just fling glass around. If the camera's shaky, it's my cameraman, Ken3. Oh, there's some. So, at least we got some in there. I'm not that bad. Ah, it's teasing. Here's some shakiness for you. Right. He's the lowest paid tripod I've ever had. <laughs> so yeah, it'll be interesting to see if those labels come off. You can break it with the labels on and just throw it in there. I mean, you technically do it in the sea anyway, right? Yep, more label. Oh, there's some of that nasty glass that came out of the burn barrel. Come on, get in my hand. Oh, yeah. There you go. Good chunk of it. Okay, I'm just going to grab the rest. Fill it up. Alright, I'm going to call that good. I don't want to get it too full. I want to be able to let the glass slide against each other. One scoop of 60 90. little water and see you in a couple days. Well, today I got my wife to join me to finish up so she can give you a little bit more of her reaction on how the glass turned out. Um, so the pile over here, this is the first barrel I did. Uh, I broke the pasta jar and the kombucha bottle and this is, um, as you saw, I just threw it all in there, even the little tiny pieces so there's a lot of little shards in here that are still kind of dangerous if you just want to reach in there and grab a fistful firmly. But the edges are rounded down so they're not sharp. And then over here is all that stuff had the labels on it. Hmm. So that's kind of cool. The, la the tumbler took the labels right off and it just came in uh, when I rinsed it off. It all just went down and through the strainer into the bucket. So well, What was this light green? Uh, light green was, yeah, it was a wine bottle. Yeah. I think that was the, uh, Dark Horse or whatever, mm -hmm. and this was the, uh, the Fit Vine or whatever bottle. Oh, cool. And, uh, yeah, and this is the piece, oops, I'm sorry. This piece, it came, it got a nice little, it got frosted on the inside even. That was the one that had been, that came out of the burn barrel, so I had all the plastic mm -hmm. gunk stuck on it, and... The plastic, it didn't seem to affect the melted plastic. It didn't seem to affect the tumbler or the way it went at all. It still tumbled up nice. It still got a good look on it. And, and that stuff was sticking to the labels. Oh, yeah. Interesting size or shape. Yeah. All these little glass. I didn't grab any. When you saw me load this with a tumbler, I had my gloves on, so I wasn't grabbing little pieces at all. This came off the tum off the. Uh, labels so that was stuck to the label and yeah 
ground away the label and left me with some cool little pieces of sea glass. Yeah, they really, those really look like sea glass, yep. these little art pieces. Yep, exactly. And that's what my wife noted in the what came out of the tumbler. She says the little pieces look more like what you'd find on the beach, whereas this stuff looks more like <laughs> uh, manufactured. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I did note with this pile, um, I get a lot of these little black flecks on there, like little pieces of plastic, mm. little, I don't know, something's on there. And But I threw the floor sweeping in this one, and... And they, they had some sawdust in it, so I'm kind of thinking that whenever I run across one of those little pieces of black, it might be the sawdust. From your floor. <laughs> it might be, yeah, this is the sawdust. Yeah, when you I was breaking it. You clean your floor more often, huh? Well, I did sweep it before I broke oh. the glass. <laughs> Tidied up a little bit. But, yeah, so I think, well, maybe there's some sawdust. I don't know. Right? That might be a piece of wood. <laughs> Oops. Can't hardly see it there. But. Yeah, so, I don't know. Just a little warning, don't throw sawdust in your <laughs> rock tumbler. You're going to end up with stuff like that on your glass or rocks. At least in step one. Gross. But yeah, it was just fun. I mean, for my first tumble, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to expect. And like, the other thing to note, too, is I filled that barrel pretty full, as you saw in the video, the beginning of the video. This barrel was really stupid full and it took a week to polish these up as opposed to four days these were in the tumbler mm. four days and the belt i had two belts break on that tumbler in the meantime so i had two belt breakages in there so it didn't tumble for a full four days even and it still came out just as good looking as the other stuff maybe even better you get a little more frosted look so yeah definitely when you're tumbling glass don't overfill your tumbler um, that would be my note. Yeah, I got a little bit of shiny in there where it didn't really tumble up all that well. But the grooves. Sea glass, you can throw it back in there or whatever. And I was wondering if those grooves would come off, but uh, definitely not. Yeah. Definitely on there. Well, uh, yeah, we saw in the kombucha bottle, yeah, there's still the anchor on it. So, let's see if I can find it again. Oh, that one took a break somewhere in the end, or near the, uh, in the process, so it didn't come off all that well, but, yeah, just kind of cool. So hopefully, uh, if you were looking to tumble glass, you got a little idea of what to do and what not to do. If you've already tumbled glass, uh, yeah, don't overfill it. You probably already know now, and very cool, very fun. And I'm sure you're going to be seeing me do something. Maybe, maybe I'll even try to make jewelry out of this stuff. Or I'm sure I, wind chime. I'm going to have a wind chime, sun catcher type thing. I'm sure too. Oh, look forward to seeing that in the future. Again, hit that uh, like button, and you'll uh, see it when it comes up. So, thanks for checking this out. Thanks for joining me on this journey, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.